rifles at Tilbury, the Empire Windrush brings to Britain 500 Jamaicans. Many are ex-servicemen who know England. They serve this country well. In Jamaica, they couldn't find work. Discouraged but full of hope, they sailed for Britain. Citizens of the British Empire coming to the mother country with good intent. Prodded by public opinion, the colonial office gives them a more cordial reception than was at first envisaged. Many are to be found jobs. Our reporter asks them what they want to do. Uh, why have you come to England? To seek a job. And what sort of job do you want? Any type, so long as I get a good pay. Some will go into industry, others intend to rejoin the services. Now, you're an ex-Air Force, aren't you? Yes. Are you going back into the Air Force again? Yes. Did you know if you'll be accepted? I think so. Some plan to return to Jamaica when conditions improve. Their spokesman sings his thanks to Britain. Now, may I ask you your name? Lord Kitchener. Lord Kitchener. Now, I'm told that you are really the king of Calypso singers. Is that right? Yes, that's well, now, so will true. Will you sing for us? Right now. Yes. London is the place for me. London, this lovely city. You can go to France or America, India, Asia or Australia, but you must come back to London City. Well, believe me, I am speaking broad-mindedly. I am glad to know my mother country. I've been traveling the countries years ago, but this is the place I wanted to know, darling, London. This is the place for me. The, the Empire Windrush docked at Tilbury in East London on the 22nd of June, 1948. 493 Caribbean men and women had crossed the Atlantic. Some were coming to join the British Armed Forces. Others wanted to establish new lives in the mother country. All of them filled in boarding cards, which were kept carefully for future reference. <laughs> One of the women traveled from Jamaica without a ticket. She was a stowaway. Her name was Avril Warp, a 25-year-old seamstress from Kingston. When Avril arrived as an immigrant, she found herself living in two realities. The realities she brought with her and the reality of the place she arrived. The Britain that Avril came to was already a hostile environment for people who were black, people who were gay, people who were poor, people who were disabled. It still is today. Carnival was one of the ways in which Caribbean people lived out one reality in the middle of another. Carnival is a dance-off in a prison cell. It's a party on a battlefield. Here at Greenbelt, we also live in two realities. We are strangers and friends trying to make a festival in a hostile environment. Carnival, like our festival communion, says to a dark world, we beg to differ. So let's party!
today, today we invite you to join in an act of the imagination. We invite you to imagine that Avril Warp is here with us at Greenbelt. Perhaps she is. Let's try to enter into her experience to see the world through her eyes. It's so cold in this country. <laughs> People stare at me like I'm a strange animal. The food is so bland and the clothes are so gray. I've been spat at in the street. I've been targeted by the police. I've been turned away by employers and landlords. I've been turned away by churches. I'm a citizen of Britain, yet I'm expected to prove my right to be here. Welcome to our Green Bell Communion, Avril. Welcome, everybody. Today, we are stowaways, hitching a ride to glory. Our God is here. Is with us. We need not fear. The, the spirit, spirit is with us. us. We are surrounded by love. The, the spirit, spirit is with, with us. us. We defy injustice. The, the spirit, spirit is with us. us. We live in hope. The, the spirit, spirit is with us. us. We travel in faith. The, the spirit is with us. We belong in eternity. The, the spirit is with us. Our God is here. The spirit is with us. Oh, oh yes! yes! But, but wait, <laughs> if you're a stowaway like me, then you have no rights except those that are given to you. Before you get carried away with your celebration, you need to look at yourselves. 70 years on, Britain still judges, shames and excludes me. You are a part of the hostile environment. You like to think you're colorblind, but that's not how it feels to me. In your mind, you are a rainbow people. In reality, we are still unequal, untransformed. Avril, we want to be changed. We want to be a holy people. What shall we do? This sort of spirit only comes out by prayer. Mid 
importance, he gave up the sea and became an Anglican minister. Hooray! But he continued to invest in the slave trade and to justify it from his pulpit for 20 more years. a subject of humili humiliating reflection to me that I was once an active instrument in a business in which my heart now shudders. Tell me, Avril, how is it today? Still, we are tattooed with our otherness, yet still we are invisible. Still, we face a mountain of unconscious prejudice. Still, black women work twice as hard to be considered half as good. Still, people of color are excluded, devalued, shamed, and mistrusted by our government, in our workplaces, in our churches, here at Greenbelt. Who is doing this to you, Avril? Still you, John. Still you. because this is who we are. People broken by history and people who broke history. And we are yours, so you must be the God of the broken. We have been through wars over land, over places to call home, over places to own, over places that own us. And here today we stand somewhat together. People who are descendants of land owners, land takers, traded peoples, people traders, profited and impoverished. People whose people survived famine, people who were never touched by famine. People whose people were poor, hardworking, feeling far from the powers that undid us. Some of us are from hurt people who have hurt people. 
Look at the harm that we've done to each other. And in the middle of this harm, look, God, at the stories of courage and love that have sustained us. Look at us, O oh God. We stand here somehow and somewhat together. Look at us, O oh God. Lift us in our broken stories. We lift our hands to you. We cannot undo the pain of the past, so give us the imagination to change the ways we tell the past. And today, to act to make a better future. Speak to the original sins and wounds at the hearts of us. Renew the true power of true power in all of us so that we can speak stories of renewal, repentance, life and creativity. You are the God of love and we are practised in the art of hate and the hope of healing. Turn us towards you and towards each other in the name of love so that we might be renewed together. Amen. A lie cannot live. God, God desires peace. Let's stick with love. Hate is too great a burden. Love is the only way forward. Let's greet each other with the open hands of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
down. It was the Feast of Pentecost. Carnival was in the air. People swarmed in from all over the place. There were people with tongue-twisting foreign names from cities far off. From Phrygia and Pamphylia. Egypt and Libya. Pontus and Asia. There were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Cretans, Arabs, and other places much easier to pronounce. It was a gathering of every nation under heaven. Young, old, rich, poor, men, women, immigrants, refugees, orphaned and widowed, the homeless and those on the margins. The friends of Jesus were gathered in one place. Suddenly, one hurricane-like force wind filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, they were all ablaze with the Spirit and started speaking in different languages. The commotion drew people in from outside who came running to see it. They were thunderstruck when they heard their own heart languages being spoken by those who were not their own. They were baffled and couldn't figure out what was happening. What's going on here? Bloody foreigners coming over here, speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Peter, though, stood there all fired out and boldly came out. We are not drunk, sisters and brothers. We have a wonderful story about Jesus, the, Naz the Nazarene, the one who comes from the Windrush God to share with you. Listen. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came so they can have life and have it abundantly. Good morning. I'm an Episcopalian from New York, and we've heard that our presiding bishop was in this country earlier this year. Yeah, you're welcome. Our presiding bishop reminds us every single time he preaches that we have one task, just one, to follow Jesus in the way of love. He calls us the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, and you're welcome to use whatever version of that works for you. It really works for us. The first days of that Jesus movement are what you just heard about. That's a version of Acts 2, the best translation I've heard. <laughs> Those first communities gathered together to figure out what it might look like to follow Jesus if Jesus is not literally here to point us along the way. The book of Acts actually is quite remarkable and worth a read if you haven't read it recently. Frankly, if you go to church these days, you might know nothing about what the book of Acts has to say looking around at most of our churches. It is impossible to miss in Acts that the mark of the earliest Christian communities is diversity. They literally could not even speak the languages of the people to whom they were called to be with in ministry in community. And yet the good news of liberation, of freedom and love, comes to all gathered, it says, in their own language. Interestingly, not the language of the disciples, as we just heard. From all the important ancient record brought to us by scholars in our time, 
It seems that the early church did not offer Galatian, sorry, excuse me, Galilean fishermen accent and deportment classes. Now, if you go to church, you might have been in one of those Pentecost services that takes these readings and has people get up and read parts of this or the gospel in any language that they choose, right? Just fun for the space. And people don't have to understand it. It's not translated. We just get up and use all these languages. We learn a lot about each other when we do it, if you've ever been a part of this. Usually someone like me selects the few lines that we're gonna read and then I hand them out and everyone gets them translated or knows what they're supposed to do and prepares and we practice. I like to hear something about freedom and liberation in a language that I don't understand, so that's usually what I get them to translate. I usually use Galatians 5.1, really fun to hear in a lot of different languages. And we listen, as you probably do, often in wonder as our friends speak a language they love or are working on learning. I usually pronounce very poorly what my father has transliterated for me from Malayalam to kick it all off. In the US, a lot of us use Spanish as well, and a lot of us understand some Spanish, but then it gets really interesting. And there are lots of questions to ask later on over coffee about what language that was and why you chose it. There is that woman who wishes to live in France, the family that left Germany before the war, the ones that left places of war in this last decade, the ones that walked to our country, the ones that have wondered where their ancestors are from, the ones whose ancestors were enslaved on our land, the one whose ancestors spoke a language very few people are left alive to speak because of our government the ones who have no other language to share. I get choked up every year as I read mine, predictably. It is in my dad's handwriting, which reminds me of being a little kid learning English from him. It is a language I no longer speak because English only was the policy of the church school that I started out in as a four-year-old, and we did it. My parents wanted me to learn and thrive in school and in our new country, so we did it. Those of us that stumble over a heart language or accent are embarrassed in that space not to be experts anymore. Someone in Kerala where I'm from would laugh at my broken Malayalam, but it's all I have left. And the church invites me to bring and share that break of my heart with them. I don't know why I trust that, but I do. And that is the question for us today. We are being honored when we hear the story of Windrush. We are honored. It is a profound and undeserved blessing for us of grace and mercy. I wish we Christians had a ritual action like most of the other religious traditions do for when we are hearing something that we do not deserve. Too great to bear. We should cover our eyes or bow our heads or hold our tender ears. How do we appropriately honor what we have just heard? We cannot do it justice. We have not yet. A ship called Windrush, you can't make that up. It is as though the Spirit of God became the name of a ship, a ship carrying subjects of the British Empire whose ancestors were kidnapped and stolen and sold legally to make places like this rich. And yet the human spirit thrived in those bodies and souls because our Bible teaches us that God stays close to those whom the world betrays. And like a rush of wind, here they came, eager to continue to learn and to thrive, and those beautiful souls have been revealed again to this nation in their old age, in their vulnerability, exploited as a tool of political rhetoric, nothing else. Where are your papers? My parents, too, were born subjects of this empire, my grandparents and their parents. My father remembers the day after independence, in by then a hungry and poor India, a nation that would pay reparation, like all of the colonies, to its conquerors now departing. Reparation. Haiti still pays France. That might be among the most vile things I've ever said on a Sunday morning. The reason to read Acts is to be reminded that it is not solely an exercise of the heart or the spirit to imagine the way of Jesus. 
You don't actually have to sit in silent meditation, although that is a very good thing and you should probably do it later on today. You don't have to. You don't have to remove yourself from the worries of this life to hear the voice of God coming at you like a rush of wind. It is my experience that the people living right around us, our neighbors and the news that we can find somewhere in papers or on our phones, about the people who our systems of domination try to marginalize or cast out, all of us, we are all around, aren't we? Muslims say of matters of good and evil that it is like the blood in your veins, the vein right here, the one here. You can feel it and put your hand on it, close at hand, like the reign of God's justice, a part of us. The world around us reveals it to us, and so we must work to live together as siblings, which would involve changing the world around us if it is to be true. Most of the work of our salvation, and there's an old-fashioned word, salvation, is to stand alongside one another in wonder and to be changed, every last one of us. Insist upon it for yourself, because when we inherit power, when we choose to own it and wear it and to be honest, not everyone wants to stand next to us because we might not be safe. We must acknowledge that. And when we inherit discrimination, it works pretty much the same way, and we must acknowledge that. The rush of wind creates a cacophony. This is what God's love and justice looks like, the text tells us, and it is not an easy thing. Some hearts will break as they seek truth and require your protection. Some should not yet trust this place. Your own heart might break in what feels like powerlessness and confusion, but there, we are told, is where the wind will rush in. That's roughly equivalent to the population of Britain. 
Our prayers this morning will be led by Christians from the Rulari refugee camp in the town of Maiduguri in northeastern Nigeria. Maiduguri is about 100 miles north of Chibok, where 300 schoolgirls were kidnapped in 2014 by Boko Haram. Ten years ago, Maiduguri was also overrun by fighters who burnt the churches and killed many believers. Now that Boko Haram have left Maiduguri, it has become home to many people who have fled other parts of the country to escape violence there. Over 500 women, men and children live in three camps in the town. They sleep in makeshift shelters on borrowed land. A Christian community meets every Sunday. We visited them last week and asked them how they would like us to pray. As you'll hear, Wulari is extremely noisy. So to help you to hear and join in, we will repeat their prayers after them. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I bring sweet greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Green Belt Festival. I welcome you in the name of the God the Father, and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are still in the faith, in the midst of persecution or tribulation, so that they can gain encouragement from us that nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, we need your peace in this world in Nigeria. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, we need your peace in this country of Nigeria. We want the children to go, go to school. Here in our camp, we want our children to forward their education because we are lacking of education. We want the children to go to school. Here in our camp, we want our children to forward their education because we're lacking of education. We have challenges in our camp with regard to feeding. Uh, the food that the WFP is giving, that is the World Food Program, and actually the yes, food are not sufficient, and this food is insufficient. We need an intervention. We have challenges in the camp with regard to feeding. The food that WFP is giving, that's the World Food Programme, is actually not sufficient. This food is insufficient. We need an intervention. Oh Lord, help us as we are in this camp. Most of our youth are living without employment. Oh Lord, help us in this camp. Most of our youth are living without employment. Oh Lord, we want you to deliver our people that are in the hands of Boko Haram. Oh Lord, we want you to deliver our people that are in the hands of Boko Haram. My Lord and my Lord, we are asking to restore us back to our normal positions. My Lord and my God, we ask you to restore us back to our normal positions. Oh Lord, we want to leave this place because it's not our permanent place. Oh Lord, we want to leave this place because it's not our permanent place. Oh Lord, we are never peaceful in Barlow State and Nigeria in general. O oh Lord, may their peace reign in Borno State and Nigeria in general. O oh, Almighty Father, I want love to reign in Nigeria. O oh, Almighty God, I want love to reign in Nigeria. Sheltering God, for the hundreds of thousands of people in Nigeria, in Kerala, and elsewhere who will try to sleep under tarpaulins tonight instead of under the familiar roof of their home, not knowing what the future holds, lamenting the loss of loved ones or all that they owned on this earth. We pray for your deep comfort and your generous provision through the response of the International Family of Humanity. In your mercy, hear our prayer. May God bless all of us in Jesus' name. 
together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The world is broken and we are broken too. What shall we do? Let's part What can we bring? Everything we have. God has given us bread. This will be God's body. God has given us wine. God has given us a song. The night before he died, Jesus met with his young friends. They were laughing and joking together. Then things got more serious. Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to you, God. He broke it into pieces and gave it to everyone. <clears throat> this is my body, he said. Do this and know that I am with you. Jesus is alive. And we are alive in Jesus. Later, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you. He shared it with them and said, this is my blood. It brings new life. Do this and know that I am with you. Jesus is alive. And we are alive in Jesus. And so remembering Jesus who died was raised to new life by you and is alive forever. We are glad to share that life and live in him. Jesus is alive. And we are alive in Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and wine can be for us the body and blood of Jesus.
this bread. God is poured out for us in this wine. And in God's brokenness, we find ourselves made whole. God has given us God's own self. Now, now we can celebrate. We are God's beloved community. Christ invites us all to this party.
Organizations. They reflect Greenbelt's four campaigning concerns climate change, migration, UK poverty, and Israel Palestine, plus the theme of this year's service, racial justice. Full details are in the festival program. In a moment, white buckets will make their way from the back of the crowd to the stage. You can make a gift by putting in cash or a check made out to Greenbelt Festivals Limited into the bucket. If you do that, please also complete a gift aid form, which you will find in your communion bag, and put that in the bucket too. Alternatively, you can make your donation online by credit or debit card. If you'd prefer to do that, please visit the Angels Lounge any time over the weekend. Finally, you could make a donation through the communion page of the Greenbelt website. Whatever you choose to do, thank you for supporting Greenbelt and these fantastic projects.
loving God, by your divine alchemy, turn them into joy for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Thank you for joining our festival communion service. After our final song, there'll be more red hot gospel music from Tracy Jane Campbell and the Soul Sanctuary Gospel Choir. So if you fancy an after church gospel party, stay right where you are. As we finish our festival communion, let's make this affirmation together. Goodness, Goodness is stronger, stronger than, than evil. evil. Love is stronger than hate. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through God and us. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children will rejoice in one common band of humanity. In the reign of our God, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right now. Clap your hands, everybody.
um, to ensure that you put your glass bottles in the red wheelie bins which are plotted around the stadium to also know that there's going to be windy weather so please make sure that your tents are secure and make sure that the communion buckets are all at the front have a blessed day Bye. <laughs> Oh, no.